Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to another episode of Sri's daily global COVID-19 show. My name is Sri Srinivasan, and I'm the Marshall Loeb Visiting Professor of Digital Innovation at Stony Brook School of Journalism. It is my honor to convene this global conversation where we talk about various aspects of COVID-19. We try to do that by not focusing on the news, but looking at issues that you may not find every day on the news. And today we have a very important topic that we're gonna cover and we have a very special guest. So let me tell you what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna talk about privacy in a COVID-19 world. And our guest is Yoav Degani. He is founder and CEO of myprivacy.io, myprivacy.io. So nice to have him here with us. He's joining us from Israel, where he is based. He's an entrepreneur there. And that's why we're live 12 hours ahead of when we normally are. We didn't want to bring him on at you know, very early his hours. So normally we're on, say, around 9 p.m. Eastern. It's 9 a.m. Eastern here. If you're watching us for the first time, we're so grateful to have you here. We're on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. And we would love to have you follow us on those platforms. I'm at Sri on Twitter and SriNet on YouTube, as well as on Instagram. Also, we'd love for you to subscribe on to our YouTube page, youtube.com slash SriNet, so that you can see all our episodes. Today is a milestone day. It's episode number 70. That's right, 70 straight days we've been doing these shows because it's been 70 days of lockdown in New York. I said I would do these as long as we're in lockdown, I thought a couple of weeks, and here we are 70 days later. I'm so honored to have this community that we've built around the world. Tell us where you're watching from. Just go in and type and tell us where you're watching from, how you're feeling, how you're doing and we will get a chance to talk to you and get your comments and share them. What are your thoughts about privacy? What needs to be fixed? What's not being fixed? What are you worried about? Tell us all in the comments and we'll bring them on. And of course, tell us how and tell us where you're watching from as well. I want to first, however, pay some bills. So we're going to thank our sponsors. And our first sponsor is Sewn Social Media Solutions. Survive with live video bootcamp. Starting June 1st, launch your own consistent live stream show in just eight weeks. This is a course that you can take right now. Learn how to get and keep your message out there, building relationships with your customers and potential customers during a time when they need it most. Learn to get past the fear of going on camera, what to talk about, the tech, how to promote, actually launch your show in a supportive community of professionals at Sohn Social Media Solutions, S-O-H-N Social Media Solutions. We're very grateful to Tim Sohn of Sohn Social Media Solutions for being our very first sponsor at the beginning of the pandemic. Since then, we've had so many other sponsors, but you never forget your first sponsor. Bruce Springsteen says he remembers who gave him his first $5 to play music. We'll never compare ourselves to Bruce Springsteen again, but just to say, I will always be grateful and if you have an ad you'd like to run on our show, please let us know. Our rates are really, really inexpensive and a great way to connect with the planet. And before we launch our uh, guest, launch into our guest, we want to tell you about my new course. It is a free certification course for fundamentals of social media, for journalists, PR professionals, and everyone. And I mean everyone who can learn from this course the fundamentals of social media. It's an on-demand two-hour certification. It's broken up into little bits and you can take it, do it as fast or as slow as you want. It starts in June, but it's ready today for you to sign up. mrac.co slash social. mrac.co slash social. Please check it out. Free certification. People of all ages will benefit from this. All professions, all experience levels, everyone will benefit from this. The fundamentals of social media, the reason we're doing it is we want to help the planet. And we believe that one of the things you can do is upskill your social. And again, go to mrac.co slash social to sign up. All right, let's talk about privacy. And we have a great guest to do just that. So let me bring him on. I'm giving a moment to get ready. And he's loosening up in the back as you do when you're in the green room before you come on stage. He's just about to talk to the planet. So we want him ready. 
and he's excited. And please welcome Yoav Dagani. Hi, Yoav. Hi, Sri. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited. Thank you for being here. Uh, it's towards the end of your day. What time is it in Israel right now? It's um, far, uh, far, four, uh, four in the afternoon. Okay, four in the afternoon. Okay. It's nine. Yeah. It's nine yeah. in here, and yeah, yeah. I, I, I normally do. I just had a show eleven hours ago, so we <laughs> know. And uh, I did manage to have a shower in between. Uh, we start all our shows by asking our guests, "How are you? Where are you? How's your family?" Uh, talk about that first, please. Yeah. So uh, I'm doing very well, actually. Thank you for asking. Uh, we are all back uh, to the office uh, here in Israel, um, in Tel Aviv. Um, things are becoming uh, pretty normal. Um, I would say that it's, it feels like it's almost over here. Um, we had like a month and a half where everyone, everyone uh, were working from home. Um, uh, you know, quarantine and everything like in any other place on earth, pretty much. Uh, but um, I'm happy that um, it feels that it's behind us. Um, I'm feeling well. My family is uh, um, uh, feeling well. Personally, I don't know anyone uh, uh, who, was, uh, um, uh, who had uh, um, uh, the coronavirus. So um, uh, pretty stable and, and happy to be at the office with uh, all the team here. Well, that's that's pretty amazing that you don't know anybody who's even had it, which is very yeah. different from our experience in America, <laughs> as you know. Uh, yeah. you know. In America, we like to think we're number one in everything. And now, unfortunately, we are number one also in the coronavirus. And uh, we are seeing that country after country has had to deal with it, but nowhere like in America. I don't think Israel is even on this famous FT chart right now. And uh, I, I am sorry to say that I know multiple people who've had Corona, and I also know at least five people who have passed away. And oh. this morning, I woke up to read a Facebook message about someone I know who passed away. And I went back into my uh, email messages, and I found a message from her in 2008. And uh, just so sad that this so is sad. Uh, happening at uh, you know, it's happening all over the world, but America is uh, disproportionately affected. New York is disproportionately affected, and it's very, yeah. very upsetting. What do you think the secret is of so many other? You've traveled the world. You've spent time in America. What do you think is the reason that so many other countries are doing better than uh, than America? I think that, uh, in my humble opinion, uh, America was late. Uh, um, you know, to uh, tackle this uh, um, issue. I think that uh, Trump pretty much ignored it until it was uh, unfortunately too late. Um, I like what uh, we've done here in Israel when uh, pretty uh, soon when it started, uh, they closed all the gates, no more uh, uh, um, flights, um, income flights. Um, pretty much uh, um, everyone should stay at their home wearing the masks. Um, and then based on the, uh, you know, the amount of people who got, um, um, you know, uh, infected or, um, the death, uh, rates, um, they, you know, uh, played with, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, the terms I would say, um, uh, what you can do, what you can do. The guidelines. Yeah. 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 So, so I think that, but, but to be fair, I think it's, sometimes easier to do it in a small country like Israel. Um, the U.S. is too big. For the good and for the bad, everything is so big in America, right? So um, you're doing the most amazing things, um, you know, and, and help so many people in so many uh, uh, areas of life. Uh, but on the other hand, when you get uh, uh, such a um, tragedy, um, the numbers are... are you know, so high as well. So it's and it's a real problem. Let's now before we uh, talk to you about the privacy issues, we do a portion of our show that we call the global tour because we're people mm -hmm. watching from all over. And we're going to start here. And uh, Kanika Manga is tuning in. She's the doctor who was on my show last night. And we mm -hmm. had calls from all over the world talking to her. It's Doc, you're back. Great to see you. Rajni is watching. Good morning. Tell us where you're watching from. Vineet is watching from New Delhi, India. 
Uh, Rajni is watching from Toronto. Great to have you. Susanta is watching from Sri Lanka. Uh, how cool is this? And Vivian is watching from Sydney, Australia. And Marilyn is watching from LinkedIn in Staten Island. Uh, she was a hero during Superstorm Stan Sandy, Superstorm Sandy that mm. uh, did so much damage to America in yeah. 2012. And now she's doing such good work on Staten Island. Marilyn, we need to have you on the show so we can learn from you. Stefan Kaplan is watching. He just shared uh, the stories with everybody. We must survive with live video, he says, and he's talking about, Steve, about Tim Sohn and the video. And he has his own great show. It's called Spin It Social Hour, and it's terrific. So follow Stefan Kaplan on Twitter, please, everyone. And my mom is watching. Hey, I'm uh, <laughs> watching in Kerala in India. I'm so sorry that I'm not with you, but I feel like I'm with you in this way every day. So hello. Uh, let's see here. Vipul Anand says, hi from New Delhi. Indian government launched an app to track COVID-19 cases near us. Do you think there's a big attack on privacy as it tracks our location all the time? So I'll give you a second to think about it and just finish this tour. Pradna Haldipur is watching from Springfield. Oh, sorry, she's watching from Maryland, uh, and uh, she is... Uh, was somebody who's a, a, a good friend of the show. She was on our daily, uh, our weekly version. So this is a daily program, but the weekly version we talk on Sunday, we read the New York Times out loud and she was a wonderful guest talking about new things happening in philanthropy. So do collect, connect with her. And uh, Jennifer Phillips is watching from Chapel Hill, feeling eager to do more. So she's getting out there. Addicted Talk says, Hello to both of you. That's uh, great. And Stefan's saying hello, hello to my mom. And uh, Pradna is in Silver Spring, Maryland. I got confused. Uh, and Vipul is asking again about that. Uh, so everyone's talking here. And Marco, our friend Marco is here. Marco says, does Israel deal with privacy issues differently than the US, especially during COVID-19? So I guess we better get to the question. <laughs> Let's go to the uh, question first from uh, Vipul about uh, New Delhi, uh, about India and government. I don't know if you know this particular case, but what are governments doing around privacy at the moment? Yeah, I think we have pretty much the similar uh, uh, issue in Israel. So the, I would say the equivalent uh, um, to the NSA uh, in the US here in Israel um, got the permission to track uh, people's devices, um, phone devices, uh, and whenever they are being uh, uh, around someone who got um, uh, the coronavirus, uh, they get notified. So they say they don't use it for uh, um, other uh, uh, issues, other things. Uh, um, it's only to notify people that they should be, uh, uh, um, um, you know, at quarantine um, and that they will even know that They've been uh, around someone who, uh, who got uh, uh, ill. Um, I would say that privacy, uh, um, when it comes to privacy, it's always a trade-off. Um, you can't have today full privacy um, because first of all, a lot of companies and the governments, they pretty much know, um, I wouldn't say everything about us, but a lot of things about us. Um, and many people during the last 10 or 15 years uh, had the approach of give me everything for free and I will give you my uh, information. Uh, now people start to understand that it's a problem. But um, I guess that it depends uh, what is the need and who is using your data and for what. We cannot control uh, uh, everything. We definitely need to know better. We need to understand and, and to educate ourselves um, why uh, and how our data is being uh, uh, um, um, collected and used. Um, so we are familiar with this uh, uh, particular issue here in Israel. A lot of people said that, um, you know, in terms of privacy, that's a big deal. Uh, but once again, you cannot do anything uh, and you have to, uh, uh, you know, you have to trust the, the government that they use it the way uh, they, they said uh, they're going to use it only for, uh, um, you know, um, letting people know if they're at risk. Um, so I, I hope it answers, but uh, um, it you, you can yeah, yeah. It does. Uh, let's keep going. Marco's on LinkedIn and Marco Greenberg is a great friend of the show and Marco, uh, 
it was with us for multiple interviews. He was on the show to talk about uh, his new book, uh, Primitive, about how you, you know, your primal instincts can make a difference in surviving and thriving in the world today. It was written right before the COVID-19 crisis, but I think the world is even more primitive uh, now and the benefits from what he has done with his observations. So definitely check out his book. It's called Primitive. And the website for it is primitivebook.com, primitivebook.com. And it's Marco Greenberg who asked this question, does Israel deal with privacy issues differently than the US, especially during COVID-19? And if you can also touch upon how this affects the ongoing problems that Israel has internally and in the neighborhood. I think it's pretty much uh, uh, um, going back to the, to the previous question. Um, I'm not sure what the US is doing in terms of uh, um, you know, uh, um, the privacy of, of their uh, 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 citizens. Um, if they're doing something like uh, I've just told uh, that is being done here in Israel and, and uh, as our guest uh, um, just mentioned uh, in India, um, I think that once again, I, there's, there are things that are easier to do uh, in a small country uh, when the government has the, uh, um, pretty much uh, uh, capability of doing everything they, they uh, want to do. In the US, it's a bit different. Every state uh, have their uh, own uh, uh, rules. Um, and, and I know that New York is different than uh, uh, California and, and other places. Um, I think in Israel, they were a bit more aggressive, um, but you know, you can't do anything about it. Um, so I think that the idea um, and the thing that people need to know is that other places are uh, even more dangerous when it comes to uh, their uh, uh, private information, private data. Um, we give our data to any uh, 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 website that asks for, uh, um, you know, first of all, uh, connect our, uh, you know, social accounts like Facebook and Twitter and, and Google. Uh, and then some third party app can uh, have access to our most personal data. And we do it because we are lazy and we don't want to sign up with our email and, and you know, and add the password. So um, we have to be more careful and cautious where when we go online and browse the internet. And there are th several things we can do. When it comes to the um, government, um, I guess we, we, we can't do too much, um, but you know, we, we have to understand uh, uh, why they do it. Um, and, and hopefully uh, they won't do anything bad with, with this uh, data. Uh, anything bad uh, or, or, or thinking that I think has shown that no government will ever do what's in your interest in terms of uh, information. They, their interest is very different at a government level. Uh, mm -hmm. So let's talk about why we have you here and how you became such an expert on privacy. This is your app. It's called My Privacy. To find it, go to myprivacy.io, .io, My Privacy. And uh, he, it says the biggest and simplest privacy app ever made. And you've got very strong reviews on both Apple and Android. So talk about the app, what it does, what are the features. I will scroll through the website here so that people can understand uh, how this works. And I like your, I'm just going to read these here. It says hide location and protect Wi-Fi connection, lock your photos and videos, surf securely and anonymously with built-in ad blocker, manage and clean your social account permissions, store and create safe passwords, lock apps with another layer of security for Android only. And you are doing, you're able to do all of this. So talk about why and how you built this and how it's different. Because if you type in privacy, you get so many things. So why are you the site that people should know about and the app people should know about? So, so you said it yourself, there are so many solutions out there. And I think people pretty much gave up on their basic human right for privacy because they lack the knowledge, they don't know what to do, where to go, where should I start from? Should I go to an app store and browse between, I don't know, 4 million apps, look for what? And even if I found something, can I trust this vendor or not? And even if I trust, um, sometimes in most cases, the solutions out there are for tech savvy people, 
for people who understand what they they even uh, search for and why they what they need, uh, which is not the common uh, uh, case. Uh, so even if I understood uh, what this app is doing, it solves only one use case out of so many. So should I go and, and download 10 or 15 or 20 different apps? Never going to happen. And people, uh, mainly because of that, and, and a few others gave up on this basic human right. And when I started thinking about the idea of my privacy, I wanted, uh, in my uh, uh, entrepreneurial uh, uh, career, I always tried to find um, a solution for you know, that will touch and, and will have an effect on uh, a big amount of people, uh, not something uh, niche, not something for the experts. And, and I thought that privacy is a big issue. I think that most of the people know that uh, there's a privacy issue, but once again, they don't know what to do. And I started to realize that in order to bring privacy to the masses, uh, there should be only one uh, way of doing it, and it's building a one address for anything privacy. Um, so I started to think about a suite, uh, a model, an app that will provide you with all the uh, most uh, important tools that you need to have, things that, that you didn't even know um, uh, existed. Um, so there's a lot of discovery issues. And, and once you get to my privacy, you get a list of several tools uh, each and every one can be a different app, so it's a very ambitious uh, uh, um, app. Uh, not, not uh, uh, um, we are not calling it uh, the biggest and simplest uh, app uh, um, uh, just because we have uh, uh, I don't know uh, some uh, uh, um, um, ego issues or, or anything like that. We've built the most comprehensive uh, app ever because we believe the only way uh, people will use privacy uh, tools is by having everything in one place. And, and then once they are there, you can educate them. You can tell them why they need to, to uh, use each and every service, each and every tool. Um, and we've built things like VPN and password manager and photo and video vault, which is uh, um, an encrypted uh, place for all your photos and videos. Um, and AppLock on Android, which is another layer of security uh, if someone has access to your device. Um, and we have uh, our legacy product, which is called My Permission. My Permissions, uh, yeah. No, I'm just looking at your app. I'm just showing them. Uh, go ahead. Keep sure, sure. Going. So My Permissions was the, the, the first uh, uh, um, privacy app that we've launched about eight years ago. Uh, and it helps you see all the permissions you granted to uh, uh, third party apps on top of Facebook, Google, Twitter, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, uh, and et cetera. Um, people scan uh, all those services and then they found out on average that they have 80 to 100 uh, different services with access to their data, to their friends list, to their email address, uh, contacts and, and things like that. So my permissions is still live as a standalone app on the app store, but today our focus is my privacy. Now my permissions, which we call a, a social permissions, uh, um, is part of a small part uh, of this uh, big suite. Uh, that's the approach. We be, we believe that uh, in order to bring privacy to the masses, um, you should both have everything in one place, and second, the focus should be a very very easy to use uh, experience. Uh, so my mother and my friends and my wife can also better protect themselves, better understand. Um, and and one more thing is that we believe privacy is not a black or white thing. It's more like 50 shades of gray. You can't have full privacy unless you change your uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, operating system and, and you delete your Facebook and, and Google and everything. Most of the people won't do it. So we say, do whatever you do, but you definitely can know better and, and live in between. So you can uh, use Facebook, but use Password Manager to uh, go and have better passwords and different passwords to all the services you're using. You can upload a photo on Instagram, but use a photo vault for your private photos, for your passport, your documents, for whatever you need to have uh, encrypted and so they won't get to the wrong hands. This is where we live, uh, just in between, um, and that's uh, uh, my privacy in a nutshell.
Got it. And you are you you've decided that this should be priced and charged. This is not free, right? You can download it for free, right. and you have a seven day trial. Otherwise, it's about twelve dollars a month with a discount if you pay more, right? If you mm -hmm. pay in advance. How yeah. did you arrive at that pricing? And do you feel that that's a fair price globally, where some people are not used to or not even able to pay it like that? Yeah. So to be honest, we are still playing with the, with the pricing model. We might uh, change it um, anytime soon because we are testing several different uh, options. Uh, definitely uh, taking into consideration, uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, downloads from places where uh, people cannot pay $60 a year. Uh, so we're trying to help. Uh, the thing is that we've compared ourselves to the pricing of, of a standard VPN, which provides you only with a VPN. Um, and this is the, uh, the cost for all the things we, we are, are providing you. When you download the VPN and pay $60 a year, you get a VPN. When you pay us $60, you get a VPN, a password manager, a photo vault, social permissions manager, and et cetera, and et cetera. So um, once again, we are still playing with it, but uh, we believe that if you're not paying for your privacy app, so you don't have a privacy app, um, they have to monetize somehow. Um, and, and you know, if people give you something for free, they have to either mess with your data or advertising or things like that. We don't, know, we don't want to mess with anything. We don't have access to users' data, um, no registration uh, on our app. It's your data and you're the only one that can access this data. Um, but we raise the flag and say you should want uh, to pay uh, for your uh, um, privacy. Got it. Um, thank you for uh, sharing that. And folks, you're watching a conversation with Yoav Dadani, who is CEO and founder of MyPrivacy.io. And he's here to talk about privacy issues. He has some tips on how you can use Zoom better and just how you can be private uh, and, and think about privacy issues, even if you don't buy his app. So we want to hear from him, but we want to hear from you folks. Tell us where you're watching from, share your questions. We have so many comments that are coming in and we love hearing from you. And uh, a reminder that you are listening, you're watching my daily COVID-19 show. I'm Sri Srinivasan and we do this every day. Tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern, we are going to be talking to a nurse who works at the front lines of healthcare at, the, at a hospital in North, uh, the Northwell Hospital on Long Island. And we're gonna hear what it's like to be a nurse on the front lines. And then on Friday, we're gonna do one of our free tutorials where you can work on some of your digital skills. Uh, we have so many things coming up. We're just very grateful to everyone who has responded to this show. We've had more than 120 guests uh, speaking over the last 70 days. And we're very, very proud of the speakers and the conversation that we've built. We're so grateful to all of you. Monday is our uh, 75th show. And we would love to, again, as we did with the 50th show, turn it over to the audience and have you come on camera, speak to us, support us, talk about us, talk about how you're feeling, talk about what's happening with COVID-19. We are very grateful to you for watching right now. We're live on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. So please go in there and connect, share. You know somebody in the world who would benefit from this conversation right now. The CEO of myprivacy.io is with us, Yoav Dagani. So please do follow him and please do check out uh, his materials, including some articles he's written. We'll show you that in a minute. And I wanted to show you a couple of the shows we've done in recent days. Uh, last night, we had a Ask the Doctor segment with Dr. Kanika Manga. We also had a conversation about U.S. immigration issues with Anil Kalhan and Elizabeth, uh, uh, and, and, and Elizabeth Cohen, which was really great. We had a positivity show with Natalie Nixon. Uh, all of these are meant to be ways in which you can learn how to use uh, and how to talk about COVID in different ways. We also had our sa uh, Sunday show with uh, Rick Wilson and Steve Shale, one's a Republican, one's a Democrat, talking about how you understand the crisis in leadership in America. And Rick, because he has a huge social media following, we had 65,000 people watch us live, which was incredible. And then we also had a 
Twitter tutorial on design, sorry, a design tutorial. We also had a Twitter tutorial. And so we'd love for all of you to go back and look at all of these archives in YouTube, youtube.com slash Srinet. You can look at the 70 shows plus plus shows that are there. So now let's go back to our guest. We'll give him a heads up if he's checking his email. Uh, we want to not surprise him because privacy is really important. So I don't want to catch him in a moment of awkwardness. Uh, let me ask you uh, in terms of privacy, many people like me believe that the iPhone is more private than Android. True or false? Ah, uh, I think it's true. Okay, so we saw that, you remember in the San Bernardino terrorism case mm -hmm. in 2015, yeah. feder the federal government went to uh, Apple and said, give us the password of the terrorist phone. And they said, no. And Tim Cook has said it is a human right to have exactly. privacy, right? Exactly. So what makes it like that? Why is the Android phone more susceptible to privacy issues? First of all, the iPhone operating system is like a closed garden. So um, there are things that uh, you cannot do. Um, and, and unlike Android, when you can do um, many things on the operating system uh, level, you can change permissions, uh, you can ask for more aggressive things to do. And therefore, um, some, uh, uh, you know, apps can, can, can make a real damage. Uh, that's first. And second, it's, it's Apple's approach uh, towards privacy. And I think they are taking a more aggressive uh, approach uh, when it comes to privacy uh, than Google are taking. So uh, these are the main two reasons. Yeah. And, uh, and so, of course, you have a product that uh, will, will, deal with, will deal with those issues. So let me ask you, if I have an iPhone, why do I need another layer of security on top of that. I saw Apple fight off the FBI and keep information private. So why would I, you, why do I need another level of protection? So it's, it's not another level, it's, it's just tools that you don't have uh, that are not coming with, uh, with the device you're buying from Apple. Um, so Apple are not allowing you uh, um, to hide your sensitive uh, photos and videos in an encrypted way locally. Um, they provide you uh, the iCloud, um, and I guess that you remember uh, the case where uh, um, you know hackers uh, stole uh, um, all the nude pictures of, of all the celebrities uh, several years ago. So it's not it's not private. There are being more and more uh, uh, privacy oriented company. They are talking about it in press releases and, and etc. But there's a long way uh, to become the most private uh, um, you know, device. Um, and Apple are not building all the tools. They have the, the um, ecosystem of applications. Uh, and I think that's part of the reason uh, um, you know, they are not doing everything themselves because they need um, to justify the existence of, of the App Store and uh, the app developers. Thank you. OK, we're, let's go sit to some questions. We have so many people with so many comments here. We just love. Uh, seeing those comments, you, we are talking to Yoav Dagani, who is the CEO and founder of MyPrivacy.io. Let's see, Cherry is watching from Kerala in India. Uh, Marilyn says, I believe that the transportation system contributed to the spread of the virus. That's for sure. Obviously, mm -hmm. the international uh, ones as well as the uh, privacy issues, uh, I mean, sorry, the, uh, the various transportation systems, even in locally, uh, had, an, had an effect. Uh, Marilyn says she also knows so many who lost the battle, which is very, very, um, very, very sad. Um, Vivian says that as well. Uh, watching from New York City, congrats on your show number 70. Amazing. Always such relevant content. We're very grateful for that. And Vivian says same in Australia, that uh, the situation that she knows. Uh, Shalaja is watching from Bangalore and, uh, and people are watching from India. And uh, Pavan Dingra is watching and learning from Western Massachusetts. Pavan is a professor and the author of a new book about, uh, about higher education that we'll be talking about soon. So stay tuned for that. Pavan Dingra, check him out uh, and check out the book that he has written. Rose is here. Rose is one of our two producers. Rose is Rose Horowitz 31. She's always live tweeting. And Vandana underscore Menon also live tweeting. Thank you very much. And Vivian says, Australian government has just introduced a tracking app. Five million have uploaded, but lots of 
uh, lots have not because of privacy. So what would you, uh, have you signed up for the Israeli app or not? No. So there was, there was an app uh, that was released by a private company uh, to help people uh, uh, know if they've been uh, around someone uh, who got infected. Uh, but uh, um, the other uh, um, thing was done by the government. Uh, there was no app. They were just tracking uh, uh, the devices uh, by location and everything. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Shriya asks, hi from Delhi in India. Your view on apps being used via PC and phone to monitor employees as they work from home. So I have a thought on that, uh, but we'll get your thought and then I will answer that question. Um, so one of those, uh, uh, you know, things that happened, uh, um, the shifts that were uh, happened because of this pandemic is is uh, um, move from uh, walking uh, from a more secured uh, uh, space um, in your office to walking from home to everything is being done online. Uh, you've touched uh, um, um, Zoom. Uh, um, and, and Zoom is pr pretty much the most popular app in the world right now. Everyone is Zooming all day long. Um, a lot of people used it already uh, uh, for work-related uh, uh, um, things, but all of a sudden, all the families are, are talking on Zoom and everything. And Zoom, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, it's a nice app, and, and it provides a very convenient uh, way to... Uh, um, communicate with others. They used to have some privacy issues. Um, I know that they are working really hard. They got a lot of uh, uh, um, bad reviews about uh, the lack of privacy, I would say. Um, and I heard that the CEO said that they are postponing everything, all the future plans, uh, all the new features um, for like next releases and in the coming release. Uh, they are going to tackle only the privacy issues, so they can, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, they provide your uh, um, data um, to third parties for marketing, for retargeting. Uh, I, I don't say they, they do it uh, to damage a, a, a anyone, but once again, this is not a private uh, uh, approach. Um, and they also provide, sorry, yeah? No, go ahead. I was going to show them your article. So let's just take a look at this article uh, that you wrote, uh, Five Privacy Tips as COVID-19 Pushes Life Online. And you wrote this with Drive Global. This is Ariana Huffington's uh, project. And so let's see what the top five are. So I'll read them and then you tell us. Uh, oh, that's nice. All five of them are together. You know, normally on articles, there's one, <laughs> then long article, then, I mean, long page, then number two. So now we can see them over. Uh, be antisocial on social media permissions. So let's do one at a time. What does that mean? Be antisocial on social media permissions. So I, I touched it uh, earlier. Whenever you go to a new uh, service website uh, and you have to register, um, you can always, in most cases, uh, use your uh, Facebook or Google on Twitter or Twitter uh, credentials in order not to provide your email address or to type anything. Um, so most of the people do it. It's faster. Uh, and we are lazy uh, people. Um, so uh, um, yeah, I, I've, I've, been, I've been the same, I admit. Um, so, but one day you wake up and you see like 80 or 100 different services that runs on top of your Facebook. Some of them you don't even remember using. Some of them you thought you deleted because you deleted it from your device, but you didn't uh, disconnect it from, from your Facebook account. So they still get all the information you granted. Um, so whenever you can, um, you know, don't plug uh, your uh, uh, um, social accounts to other websites or services. Okay, number two. Hide your location. Yeah, so that's very important. So we recommend people whenever they can uh, to use a VPN. Uh, it's one of the things we, we uh, provide on our suite in my privacy, but you can use, there are lots and lots of VPNs uh, out there. Uh, and the reason is that um, VPN creates like a secure connection um, um, to, add, to another network over the internet and it encrypts um, all the data while it travels uh, from one place to another. Uh, you are most vulnerable when you uh, use 
a public Wi-Fi. You sit, it's not really relevant these days, right? But when you sit uh, on Starbucks and work and use their Wi-Fi, uh, this is the place where, where you can uh, uh, be uh, um, really damaged uh, by hackers and your um, uh, data can be stolen and so on and so forth. So whenever you can uh, uh, use a, a VPN, use it. Um, once again, there are lots of, of good um, options to use a VPN. That's, that's great. Well, let's keep going and seeing what the other, other questions are. We have a couple of other tips also. Let's just finish those from you. Sure. Uh, number three was use a VPN, right? And uh, some people know we VPN use it every day, and some people are confused. Uh, and by the way, what do you do about if you hide your location, then people can't find you, but also, I mean, the systems can't find you, but if you get lost or your family wants to try, you know, find you. So how do you explain that to your family that uh, you've turned off all your location? So you touched uh, another reason why we've built my privacy. VPN is a very good example. This is the most successful uh, privacy product out there. And still, the majority of, of the people don't even understand what VPN means. Um, my wife, you can ask her, she wouldn't know and use a VPN no matter what. Uh, and I think it's because the lack of knowledge, it's too technical, um, it sounds too like tech savvy. And we've de decided not to call our VPN a VPN on our product. And we um, um, divided, divided it into three the three main benefits it provides you, which is hide your location, fake location, when you want to uh, watch, I don't know, some content uh, which is uh, blocked on your country and you want to watch uh, uh, something else uh, on the US or, or whatever, and uh, protect your Wi Fi connection. That's the main benefits of, of a VPN. Um, um, so, so, yeah, so, so you should definitely hide your location. I don't, I don't think that if you're getting lost or anything, uh, the, the fact that you use the VPN uh, has uh, anything to do with it. But what if you turn off your location, though? It's, it's not turning off your location. It's just uh, letting you browse the, the internet as if you are like in a server in a different place, as if you are surfing from a different uh, country uh, in most cases. But it doesn't mean that uh, uh, you're turning off your location on, on the device. And then it says your camera roll is not a filing cabinet. What does that mean? So I would say it uh, differently. Um, this is a big uh, tip I, I would provide. Uh, I think everyone should have an encrypted uh, vault uh, for their you know, uh, photos and videos who are, uh, um, which are sensitive. So you can do it on my privacy, but there are many other alternatives for a vault. Uh, because your gallery is full of, you know, medical documents and, and you know, pictures of your uh, passport maybe or your uh, credit cards or bank account details um, and it's not secure while it's there. So you should definitely put the sensitive stuff in an uh, encrypted vault um, and that's, uh, that's what I meant there. Uh, got it. And then your final tip uh, was... Similar passwords create more risk. Right. So you should definitely uh, use uh, a password manager because it uh, gives you the ability to create strong passwords, uh, different passwords for many different uh, uh, services and websites. Uh, one of the things that people say all the time is that I don't remember my passwords, I have too many passwords. And when you have everything stored in a password manager, uh, it provides you, uh, uh, it, it, it takes off the need to remember everything. And, and in addition, it helps you to generate new passwords, strong passwords. And whenever you are using uh, the same password for like different services, you are at risk because if I got, I don't know, if someone hacked my uh, uh, Facebook account um, and I have the same uh, uh, password on my Gmail account, then all of, a, all of a sudden they get all my uh, uh, you know, emails and, and connections and everything. So different passwords, strong passwords for different services. And, and this is something we've been saying, you know, I've been doing technology reporting for 25 years and we've been saying, fix your password, fix your password. And yeah. what is still the number one password in the world? Password. 
right? People still, <laughs> yeah. people yeah. still do that. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Arlene says she doesn't know what day it is, but howdy from uptown. And Tim says uh, a morning COVID-19 show, shocking. And Hal Wiener is watching from Lincoln University in Pennsylvania. Thank you for watching. Carla thought the same thing. I'm so happy to be wide awake and listening, although she's usually going to the uh, to, to bed when we, we go live. And Stefan says, I just went live and now watching live. Live streaming, live, new hashtag. Uh, Tutan says, hello. Uh, Karna says, hello. Uh, Stefan says, I forgot which airline I just read about, but they started having all flight attendants wearing full protective gear. All companies must take care of their employees. How are you taking care of your employees, you all? Yeah, so up until this week, everyone worked from home uh, for about a month and a half, maybe a little bit more. Um, I was the only one coming to the office, but I was here by myself. Uh, I have a little baby at home, and it was pretty much impossible uh, walking uh, from home when he's, you know, crying and, and wants my attention. Uh, but um, I gave them time to uh, walk from home um, and do whatever they need in order to take care of their families. They were, you know, there are parents among my uh, uh, employees, um, and they needed um you know to divide their time between uh, uh entertaining the kids to working which is difficult so um we are as flexible as we can um i understood everything uh, um you know all the challenges um and until uh, it was safe i didn't ask anyone uh, uh, to come back to the office and work as, as usual you saw the big news that jack dorsey said that people can work from home on twitter and to, and then he said today he said about Square as well as the sea of two companies as you know. Right. What is your attitude to work from home? I like everyone uh, at the same place. I think you know working from home is not easy. Uh, it can be nice from time to time, uh, but I think that people should uh, meet each other, should raise ideas, should work together, and 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 you know solve things together. We've tried Zoom on a daily basis or, you know, uh, video, uh, Google Hangouts or any video uh, uh, conference tool. It's not the same. The magic doesn't happen. It, it's okay to maintain things, to, to get an update, but it wasn't the most creative uh, uh, time of our uh, uh, life uh, in this company uh, when we worked from home. So I think I'm not sure why uh, Jack uh, said it. Um, well, he maybe. said everybody who wants to and everybody who can. That doesn't mean that every single person will never come to the office. So uh, my opinion is that that whenever they will be able to get back to the office, 90% or more will come to the office. They want to meet their friends. They want to work with people. They want to eat lunch together. Um, we are humans. We need this human communication to see each other. Um, video is nice, but it's it's not the uh, you know the best uh, uh, thing to to you know to communicate. Sure. A quick question here from Tutan says, what important security guidelines would you suggest for Android users? Apart from buying my privacy, <laughs> so what is one thing that an Android user can do today? So I think first of all, don't download anything you don't trust or you see like, uh, uh, um, I don't know, a little amount of downloads or like super bad reviews. Um, see uh, um, when is the last time this uh, um, app was uh, updated um, with the new version. Uh, if it was a year ago, it should, you know, uh, be a, a warning sign. So, so I, I guess that on Android, you have so many ways to download apps, even not from, from the Google Play Store. Um, and I think that you should be uh, uh, extreme uh, uh, careful and cautious whenever it comes to downloading an app you don't know. Um, don't you know, press on anything you see, uh, even if the picture looks good. So the question for you is then, do you think Android can ever become like Apple, more secure, more safe? I don't believe. Um, I think, once again, it's a different approach. Apple is the closed garden. Google is the opposite. Uh, but I think that on, on Android, even on the operating system, you can play with, with the permissions you grant to applications on, on your device. Um, so there are granular permissions. You can turn off the things that you don't need 
in order to uh, uh, make the app work. Don't close, you know, the things that will break the app. If you are using uh, Instagram and you'll close the camera, it pro probably uh, won't let you uh, operate it as needed. But if you are using Facebook and there's no need for you to uh, have the micro microphone uh, um, open, so go go and, and close it on on your uh, permissions on the device. So uh, this is something Apple added as well, but but it's it's easier to do uh, and play with it on, on Android as well. And we're looking at your article in online life, some things you really don't want to share, and you put that in multiple buckets. So let's go through the buckets very quickly. You mm -hmm. said medical, financial, academic, personal interactions, and sexual and romantic uh, uh, items. Don't put them in, online, but people do that all the time, right? Like right. that's that's certainly uh, one of the issues. Okay, here's a question from Rajendra. He says, uh, despite all the complex measures taken, I'm sure that I'm still leaking info. Most of my apps are walled off, though. So, yeah, I, you know, he's a very scientifically minded guy. So. I know he'll be doing the best he can, but it shows that even he doesn't know. Listen, even I don't know, you know, everything about all applications. And, and I said earlier, we are living in between. It's, it's 50 shades of gray. There is no full privacy. You can ask some, some basic question. Who is the app vendor? Uh, why do you need it? Uh, you can see a link that you are pressing on if it like a lot of uh, uh, bad guys took advantage of zoom populations uh, popularity sorry um, and and created like links that looks like zoom but with you know uh, double m or double z or things like that and then uh, it, it led to uh, phishing and some other things so be more cautious you can't control everything, but if you ask for my like top five uh, uh, recommendation is, is use a VPN whenever you can, uh, hide sensitive uh, um, uh, photos and videos and documents in an encrypted photo vault, use a password manager, different password for different website. Um, don't log in uh, um, with your social accounts whenever it's possible. Um, and, and close the permissions, uh, um, as I just said, uh, that you don't need for, for apps, um, um, for specific apps like microphones or, or things that are, you know, too aggressive and, and there's no, not even a connection between these permissions to the uh, um, uh, app and, and what they're doing. Stefan says, I always tell people and my students at FIT, do not give away everything uh, privacy-wise by linking all of your accounts uh, with apps by signing on. Don't do it, he says. Uh, Rajendra exactly. says, what about browsing? Would you recommend Orbot or some version of Tor? Now, a lot of people watching have no idea what those last two things are. What is Tor, what is Orbot? And talk about how it's different on browsers. And uh, do you have a preference uh, between Chrome, Safari, Firefox, Opera, and then all these other things. So talk about that. Yeah, so I prefer using uh, our uh, safe browser. Uh, that's another tool we have, but once again, there are lots of alternatives. Um, Firefox. Do you get it for the same price? Pardon? Do you get it for the same price that you're buying? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. Everything you get uh, um, is for the same price. You get- Phone for and device, phone and laptop? Uh, at the moment, we only support uh, uh, phones. Okay. Um, so whenever you uh, browse the internet, if you have My Privacy or other uh, safe brow browser, you should definitely do it because it blocks uh, ad trackers, other trackers, uh, analytic trackers, um, and, and some other stuff. Um, it deletes all your history and cache. It doesn't collect uh, uh, your data. So it's better to use uh, um, a safe browser um, Firefox has a great solution. Um, we have a great one as well, and there are others. Wait, so what is Orbot and Tor? So uh, I really don't want to talk about it because it's, it's more for the uh, um, tech-savvy and advanced uh, kind of uh, uh, users. Um, and, and I think that the majority of the people need to know more about 
safe browser, but um, they are pretty much providing you uh, the anonymity. Anonymity uh, you need uh, when you download um, and browse uh, um, to place you don't want other people to to know about. Got it. Uh, we're just looking through some of the comments. Uh, Marilyn's talking about our students doing some great project with digital privacy. Stefan, disconnect apps and don't leave their access wide open for eternity. Clean them out if you don't use them consistently. Uh, Vandana says, thank you for those tips. She's our uh, one of our two great producers. Uh, and uh, uh, Karapai is watching from Bahrain. So this is right in your neighborhood. Uh, yeah. And Rajendra says, while a preliminary check of my iffy app helps a trash account with auto delete could direct redirect unwanted material and ensure some privacy and ashok says thanks i will agree working from home is occasionally okay but not a substitute and rajendra great to hear from you so they're all talking there and sharing your off top tips use a vpn use a password manager don't log into apps with your social accounts and don't give permissions for your data so that, that's great and uh uh, Ashok is asking a simple question. Is Zoom safe? Um, <laughs> I would say not. Uh, but it's it's not that it will steal your data and, and, and do like a crazy damage. Um, it's just not super private. Uh, if your boss can get a record of um, some conversation you had with some team, um, that's not that's not privacy right it's not that it's not secured there's a difference between privacy to security but privacy is the things i want to keep to myself and myself only and i don't want others to to uh, see it hear it or whatever so uh once again uh having the boss uh, uh and and by the way the the one who uh, uh is the organizer of the call uh can create it a transcription of the call, uh, get a text file, so you can search by keywords, um, and, and it becomes more and more complicated. People can search for you know whatever they want very easily, and I I don't want it. I, I had you know a conversation with a colleague of mine. Um, I want to keep it between us. Um, so so it's not super private. As, as asking is it better to uninstall it? I would say don't uninstall it because if you have a client or a customer or a boss who's using it, you can't say, sorry, I don't use Zoom and walk away. No, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say you should uninstall it, but whenever you can, you should definitely uh, um, be aware that there are alternatives which are more secured and private. Uh, even FaceTime is much better. There's an encryption end to end. Um, there's an, an open source called, uh, um, um, I forgot the name, um, GC Meet, Jitsi Meet. Um, so you don't have to register or anything, just you know, uh, start the conversation immediately. So there are alternative signal provides uh, uh, um, uh, encrypted uh, uh, call uh, um, option. So if you don't have to use Zoom, Zoom uh, use the alternatives. If you know everyone uh, in the company are using Zoom, you should do it. Right. I, I hear you. All right, we have just a couple of minutes left. I want to share my thoughts on on working from home and what's going on right now. I think part of the problem is that uh, companies have always had the idea that workers are stealing from them. That is the automatic attitude that the the people that we hire, that we nurture, that we say all the time, they are our best asset. We treasure them. We treat them like they might be criminals, and mm -hmm. that they're stealing from us when they take vacation, they're stealing from us when they are, are with home with their kids or whatever. And so my feeling is that people should, instead of judging by amount of time sitting in front of a desk, they should be judged by output. And I think that's a much healthier thing for the world. And mm -hmm. so if you want them to come to the office most of the time, great, but give them the flexibility. Nobody wants to sit home five days a week and not work. They all want mm -hmm. to work. They want. My wife, who works for a big corporation, is working so hard now, like all the time. We don't even get to talk to her. I told her, if you go back to work, how will, you know, she has like an hour and a half commute. How will she do it? There's no time for the commute. Right. Uh, so, so this is where I think uh, the world fundamentally made an error by focusing on output only. Now, if you work in a factory, of course, that's the way you're going to do it. But in some of these knowledge tasks, right? Like in your case, my case, 
Let's base it on output and the meetings are important and there are ways in which you can gather. But we want to let our guest go. Uh, Yoav Dagani, you've been very kind to spend uh, so much time with us. We want everybody to check out myprivacy.io and you have a free trial for everyone for seven days uh, so they can check it out. And you said you're playing. So somebody who hears that you're playing around with pricing will say, well, maybe I shouldn't download it now. I should wait till you have the final pricing. Maybe a big sponsor will come and give it away for free no, in, or something. In, uh, just, just to emphasize, in any case, you can download the news at the moment, uh, the majority of the tools for free anyhow. So only the, the things related to the VPN at the moment uh, are the ones you need to pay for because it's a very expensive product to maintain and to operate. Um, so you can download and, and use uh, most of the things uh, for free uh, in any case, uh, even now. So even now, if I don't want to pay, I would just- Just close it, yeah. Just close and I can hide my photos, hide contacts. A lot of these I can do. So that's great. So that's very important. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah. So everybody, you can use 80%, 70%. What Even um, 85%. I would 85% say. of the app for free. You can use 100% for one week, but 85 is free. 85% is free. And so you can check out myprivacy.io. We want to thank you very much, Yoav Dagani. Thank you. Thank for you so here. much for having me. It was yeah. a real pleasure. And everyone, check out Yoav at Yoav Dagani on Twitter and also check out his website, uh, myprivacy.io. And thank you for joining us. I think it's, uh, we've gone so long, it's almost dinner time in Israel. And, <laughs> okay. uh, and uh, we uh, look at what Rajendran saying. He has a Zoom on a separate laptop with little person, personnel, uh, personal data on it. So there are different ways that people try different things, but I think you've given us lots to think about. So I'll let you go. Thank you very much, Yoav. Uh, Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. And now I just want to uh, just give you a little bit of a wrap up to uh, the show, I thought it was very useful for us to hear from Yoav whether or not you use his product. His tips were timeless and very, very helpful. So I hope you will uh, you will check the you will check them out. If you're just tuning in, I always reintroduce our guest because on TV they don't do that, and because you can't really watch the TV uh, interview again uh, easily. Or if you want join a webinar, you have to wait till somebody sends you the tool of the video recording. Uh, we are going to be live in just a minute, uh, or not live, we'll be, the recording will be available to you in just a minute. Our guest has been Yoav Dagani, who is the CEO of MyPrivacy.io, MyPrivacy.io. I hope you will uh, tune in so that you can watch live on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or LinkedIn. Please tag a friend, please hit share. That was a great show and a wonderful way for you to learn while you're going about your day. Uh, we'd love to see more of you listen in to that particular show. Uh, a reminder about our sponsor. We want to thank Sohn Social Media Solutions uh, for their uh, great work in uh, offering the Survive with Live Video Bootcamp. And we have a testimonial that we want to play for you right now. Hi, my name is Steve Taylor. And I have had the pleasure of being part of Tim Sohn's first Survive with Live video course. I had very high expectations for the course because I had taken a previous workshop with Tim on social media, and that was an excellent experience. And my high expectations have even been exceeded. I certainly knew that I'd be getting great tech tips, great guidance as to equipment and online tools and all the other uh, processes and steps necessary to create live video. What I've also been very happy to learn is more of this process of thinking through, planning through a broadcast before you even go live, um, creating a show from scratch, uh, looking at what one's market is and designing a show to be perfect for that market. I've had the opportunity since starting the show to work on several live shows and the information, the, con the connections that I've made with in the live survive a live video class and community have been invaluable in really helping me to refine my live streaming. I would highly recommend survive with live video for anyone who's going to be doing any sort of live video broadcasting. And that was an ad for for our survive with live video bootcamp that's being run by Tim Sohn of Sohn Social Media Solutions, S O H N Social Media Solutions.com, and you can. Uh, take a course so that you get in eight weeks you get the training you need and by the way that gentleman you saw there 
was our, our friend and colleague, uh, Steve Taylor, who is part of my awesome team. We take events and make them virtual. We're working on conferences, including a conference for 50,000 teachers. We are working on different things, including creating private, uh, private label talk shows, like you want to have your own talk show with the producers. We help you think about the show and how you launch it or your conference. If you know anybody who is canceling a conference, please have them contact me first. It, uh, we should, I'm telling people, do not cancel your conference without talking to me. Sri at Sri.net is my email address. Sri at Sri.net. We would love to talk to you about uh, your virtual event and how you think about it. My business has pivoted, but I'm still doing digital and social consulting. And finally, a reminder that one of the things I wanted to do was to help the entire world get better on social. So we have now, the first time, my free Fundamentals of Social Media for Journalists, PR pros, and everyone free certification course starts in June, June 8th, but you can save your seat today. mrac.co slash social, mrac.co slash social. Please sign up. I know you will benefit from it. You all know somebody who would benefit from it. Please tag them, share them, take a photo of this, or take a screenshot and share it with your family and friends and they will benefit from that. And finally, I hope uh, you will continue to subscribe to my YouTube account, Srinet, S-R-E-E-N-E-T. You can see more than 100 videos that we have done talking to some of the world's most interesting and influential and important people. And you can learn a lot. I do from this every day. I want to thank Rose Horowitz and Vandana Menon, our producers and our guests. And uh, one way to keep up with me is to uh, take a screenshot of this or take your phone and this if you take your iPhone and the camera and just point the camera at this you will be able to get a QR code that will add you to a WhatsApp alert list it is not a group with racist uncles this is a simple and clear uh, WhatsApp message when I'm live that's all once a day when I'm live that's it so please take a look at that and we'd love to get your feedback I'm looking for speakers, I'm looking for topics, I'm looking for uh, suggestions, self-nominations, welcome. We're also looking for sponsors. So with that, please email me, sri at sri.net, S-R-E-E -E at S-R-E-E.net. If I can help you with your digital issues of any kind or social media issues, let me know. Sri at sri.net. I want to thank everybody. Goodbye. <laughs>